Hi everyone, it's Karen here from www.gethookedupcrochet.com. Otherwise, you know me on social media as at Hooked Up Crochet. If this is your first time on my channel, I am so happy you are here. If you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button, you'll stay up to date with all my free patterns and tutorials. Today's video is Palm School Part 1. I'm going to go over the tools I use, how to make a palm, how to add strings or snaps to your very own faux fur palm. So let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. I think you guys are really gonna love it. Starting off, you'll need some faux fur fabric. In my upcoming Palm School Part 2 blog post, I will have links to all my favorite places where I get my fabric and my tools from. Next, you're going to need some thread and some cording depending on what kind of palm you're making. To actually make a palm, I use this Coates & Clark upholstery thread. It is super sturdy and I feel like it works the best. This nylon cording and this crochet thread, I'll show you how I use those later on in the video, depending on what kind of palm we're making. Now, you will also need a rotary cutter. This makes cutting your faux fur fabric a breeze. You'll see here why again in a minute. The next tool that I use is scissors, of course, to cut my thread. Then I use chalk to mark my fabric with. And here's my ruler I use to measure out my palms. Now, if you're making sew on snaps, you're gonna need some snaps. You can get them online or at your local craft store. If you're doing a palm with strings, definitely check out Angie and Britt. She makes these buttons and your palm with strings can actually become removable. This is a fabric that I'm gonna to use today to show you how to make our palms with. Now, I've already cut one palm from here, so I'm gonna flip it around so you guys can see what it looks like if I'm starting off fresh with a piece of fabric. Now I like to cut square palms because it's one, easier, and two, when you sew it all together, it's nice and round. So grabbing your ruler, you're gonna straighten out your fabric. Now some people like to use templates. I prefer to use the ruler. It's the same thing if you think about it, especially if you're doing a lot at once, you can go through and measure out your increments. So grabbing my chalk, I'm gonna straighten out my fabric and I apologize about this camera angle. It looks off center, but it's not. So I'm gonna measure six inches across and make a mark, and then six inches from the bottom and make another mark. Using those marks, I will make my square. So here I am just making my square. So there's that one. And now going across, I'm gonna do my line. And like I said, if I'm doing a lot of palms at once, I will go through and mark the center of the square, what size it is. That way when you're making your palms, you know what pile is what. Next, you want to grab your rotary cutter. I got mine from Walmart and I make a lot of palms and I think I've only replaced this blade maybe once. So you get a lot of use out of it. Now, taking your rotary cutter, you wanna find the edge of your fabric and you just wanna make sure you're going through the backing only. And it looks like I'm super slow at this, but I can assure you after a couple times, it goes by really quickly. I'm just kind of slow on camera for some reason. I'm still nervous recording tutorials, but I'm just taking that rotary blade and I'm going through the backing only of this fabric. So you're just gonna trace that square that you made, going all the way up, like so, and then you can turn your fabric however you like, just make sure you're following that nice line that you made. So here I am, I'm just pulling the fur out of the way, just making sure I'm cutting that backing only. And there you have it, a nice even square. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you were to use scissors. If you use scissors, you can sometimes accidentally cut the fur. And when that happens, you have this blunt edge. And when you sew the palm together, it looks really weird and ugly. So don't make this mistake. Definitely get yourself a rotary cutter. As you can see, the edges look completely different. My faux fur is nice and long on all the sides of the pink one, of this gray one, it's my little reminder, don't use scissors. So, definitely get a rotary blade.
Now, using your sewing needle and your upholstery thread, you're going to pull out maybe two to three arm lengths so you can double thread this needle. So here I am doing that. It's okay if you have extra. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that. And now I'm going to make this a double threaded needle. I'm not too keen on sewing terms, so if that's the incorrect term, I apologize. So what I'm doing is I'm threading the needle and then I'm taking both ends and I'm making a nice big knot. I just like to go around several times to make a bigger knot that way it doesn't pop or accidentally come through the fabric because I'm kind of rough when I'm making these palms so I'm just going to make a nice big knot like so. So after I do that there you go, make sure it's nice and tight. Now, taking my needle, I'm going to do a running stitch all the way around this square. You can start off anywhere you like, just make sure you're going all the way around. As you can see here, I did my running stitch all along the edge of this square, and here I am, I'm coming back to the beginning up to where I started. So I'm just gonna do these last couple stitches right here, and now leave that thread attached to your needle, because now we're going to start stuffing our palm. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my stuffing. Now a lot of times when I get my stuffing, it's kind of densely packed, so I'll kind of pull it apart I don't know, it's just something that I've always done. That way it's not lumpy. So with my stuffing ready to go, I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna pull my thread. And as you can see, those corners start to come together and we're going to form a ball. So you wanna grab your stuffing and go ahead and start putting it into your palm. And using my right hand, I'm pulling that thread, cinching it so it's starting to form a ball. And now, as you can see, it's kind of popping out the top, so I'm gonna use my other hand to shove some of that stuffing back down in there. So you're gonna stuff it all the way, and I'm using my hand to push back the faux fur. And as you can see, it's forming a ball, and you'll be left with a little hole at the top. So I'm pulling, and I'm pushing that extra faux fur back, and as you see, it came loose, so I'm gonna pull my thread again, 
stuff it down in there. Shake your palm, stuff it, and I've got a little bit of stuffing left. It's personal preference. You can use as much or as little as you like. I like to make my palms nice, big, and fluffy, so I'm gonna shove the rest of that stuffing down into that little hole and pull my thread, shake it out, push that faux fur back, and now you're left with a little hole. So you're gonna pull it really, really tight. That way you have the tiniest little hole, and now you're going to do a running stitch along the top of your palm right there. So doing a running stitch at the top will make sure that little hole that you had is nice and closed and making your palm nice and secure. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I feel it's all the way closed. And as you can see, my left hand, it's kind of red because I do squeeze these palms pretty tight when I'm doing that. Just pushing the faux fur back, making sure that there's no little hole left. And there's no like certain amount of times you need to go around. It's all about personal preference. Just make sure that you don't have a little gap at the end of your palm because that way, you know, your stuffing could fall out. And as you can see, once you do it so many times, it's ready to go. Now, what I like to do is push this fur back just to make sure that there's no little gaps left. And I'm going to now go through and hide this string because this one, we're gonna use the nylon cording to make a string palm. Now normally if I'm doing a sew on snap style palm, I will just go ahead and leave this uh, thread attached to it and use my remaining thread to sew on the snap. You'll see that in a minute. But right now I'm just gonna go ahead and make a nice knot and I'm gonna show you how I hide this thread into the palm so you can't see it. So I'm making a knot right here and I sometimes do this like four or five times. I'll just go through and make my knot like so. And then to cut off my extra thread, since this is going to be a string palm, I'll just put my needle into the palm and I'll cut off that extra thread. So, as you can see, you'll be able to see what I mean here in a second. So after doing that what seems like a million times, I just poke my needle in because I've made a knot. So then I smooth everything back and now I'm going to grab my scissors and cut the rest of this thread off because like I said, this palm I'm using strings. So I'm gonna use that nylon cording for the strings so I get as close as possible and I just snip off my thread. To make a palm with strings, I take my larger yarn needle and this nylon cording that I have and I thread the yarn needle and then I just go through, smooth out my palm and I'm going to shove that needle in there and then go through both sides like so and pull half of the string out and then I make sure it's even, so you may have to pull one side or another to kind of straighten out your strings. And then I make a double knot, like so. And this nylon cording that I have, it's pretty strong. 
So you can find something like this at your local craft store or online. And now another step that I do, I will actually re-thread that yarn needle and I will go back into the palm and kind of do the same thing. I don't know why, but I just feel like it makes it more secure in that way it won't pop off. So there's my little knot right there. Sorry, I'm out of frame, but I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to go through to kind of hide that knot. It makes the palm more sturdy, I feel. After I did that, I will take my scissors and I will cut the excess strings just to make sure they're nice and even on both ends. That's just something I prefer to do. And here in a minute, I'm going to show you how to use these amazing palm buttons from Angie and Britt. Here's the other palm that I made and I closed it up and I left my thread attached to it I closed it up completely now I leave my thread attached because I use the rest of this thread to sew on the snap so I took one piece of my staff and I put it through one of the holes right there and I'm going to show you how to go around the top and you're just going to sew this snap onto the palm with these snaps there's little holes around the top and I just make sure I go all the way around. And even though this is double threaded, I do this several times. Now, you don't wanna do too many times because it won't lay flush on your hat if you go too many times and you have thread sticking up. So I think two times all the way around the top of this is plenty. So you can go up and down into the holes but one thing I like to do is I'll go up through one hole, down through the other, and then I'll even go underneath the snap to go across, not going through any holes at all, but it's just something that I do because I feel like it kind of anchors the snap down even more. This is more of a just watch how I'm doing it and you can see what I mean. And at first your snap may be like a little loose and wobbly. So as you can see, I'm using my index finger to kind of like stabilize it and make sure it's staying right there in the middle. So I'm squeezing with my left hand and using that index finger to make sure that snap is staying right there in the middle. And now I'm going underneath the snap, not going in any holes at all, just to kind of like stabilize it. That's where I want this snap to be and then I'll go up through one of those little holes that's in the snap and down through another. And that's just how I do my snaps. So I'm gonna keep doing this all the way around and going underneath the snap, just securing it in place. And you can do this several times. And then whenever you're done, you just cut off your excess thread. So here I am, I'm pushing that extra faux fur back because you don't want to get it caught up into the snap as you're sewing. So smooth everything back and I'm going up through a hole down into another hole underneath the snap to secure it. There's no rhyme or reason to this. This is just how I do it. I just wanted to show you guys how I actually sew a snap onto a palm. This is a technique that I use and I feel like my palms are pretty sturdy. I have not had any complaints from customers and this is just the method that I use.
Okay, so here's a close-up. As you can see, I've gone around a couple times and my thread is laying nice and flat. And now I'm just going underneath the snap like I did before. I'm gonna go back and forth a couple times and then I'm just gonna cut off the excess thread. The snap will stay secure because you've gone around so many times and gone through and you made a knot in the beginning and I haven't had any complaints from customers with their snaps falling off yet and I just feel like this method works so you can try this and if you have a better way let me know in the comments. I'm always open to learning new things. This is just my technique that I wanted to show y'all. So as you can see I'm running out of thread which is okay because my snap is completely secure. So I'm going to I like to use up as much as possible going back and forth and then I'm going to grab my scissors again and just cut off that little tail right there and your snap's not going to come loose because if you did it really tight and like how I showed you it should be on there pretty well like I will go through and I will pull on it and I push it and I kind of shape it a little bit and it's on there it's not coming off it's pretty secure Now, when I'm sewing the other part of my snap onto my beanie, this is when I use the crochet thread. It's thin and it's sturdy. If you use yarn, sometimes your palm won't lay flush up against your snap, so it'll pop off. So that's why I use that crochet thread. It's nice and secure, not going anywhere, and it's perfect. Okay, and before, like I showed you, we made a palm with strings, and what you do is you take your yarn needle and you go through the center of your hat and you pull your strings through. And now I'm going to show you these amazing buttons I got from Angie and Britt. They have completely changed my world. So now you can have palms with strings that are removable. Using these cool buttons from Angie and Britt, you're going to take each piece of your string and go through one hole on one side and the other hole on the other side and all you have to do is make a double knot and it makes the beanie it makes the palm on the beanie really nice and secure so here I am doing that I'm pushing it all the way to the base or to the top of my beanie and now I'm going to take both of my strings pull really tight and make a double knot I really, really like these buttons. So you definitely want to check out her shop. Check out her Instagram as well. She has a lot of amazing products, so definitely check her out. So here I am. I'm doing my little knot. And I'm going to go ahead and double knot this. And I'm going to show you how sturdy this is. I am actually quite shocked. Like, this is really awesome. So you can cut this XX excess string or leave it but as you can see look it is super secure I'm shaking this beanie and it is not floppy it looks pretty darn good I hope you find this tutorial helpful if you do please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I really hope you enjoy making all these beautiful palms definitely tag me if you do I want to see them and follow me on Instagram or TikTok I'm at hooked up crochet thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with another